Hello, so we're going to work on a micro lecture on Newton's second law this time. As always, remember micro lectures are on the shorter side uh, and you need three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and your follow up questions on Google Forms. So, Newton's second law, we've been building up to this for a little while. You might think it's more complicated, but it's actually very simple um, and kind of elegantly so. So, Newton's second law is describing how do you calculate force or what is a force. And force is represented by the variable F. The units for it are newtons. And it's this, force equals mass times acceleration. Pretty simple. Uh, we can quickly see that this is a linear relationship where force would be Y, and your slope would either be your mass or your acceleration, and your X value would be whichever one the slope wasn't, uh, depending on what you're graphing. We can also see that weight is very similar to force. That's because weight is a force. And we can see that it matches up uh, fairly closely. Here the F is represented by W for weight. Mass is still mass. And the acceleration is just the acceleration due to gravity, much like we've plugged in G for other values of acceleration before. One other important thing to note, what is a Newton? Well, we actually came up with the unit of Newton because we got tired of saying kilogram times meter per second squared, um, where a kilogram is the unit for mass and meter per second squared is the unit for acceleration. And so a Newton equals one kilogram times a meter per second squared. Um, you can imagine how unwieldy this would be to say, oh, we've got a force of 200 kilogram meter per second squared. It's kind of strange, and so they got tired of saying that, and they just called it a Newton instead, in honor of Isaac Newton, who kind of came up with this uh, law or this relationship. All right, let's give it a shot on graphing. So we're going to graph the force versus acceleration. Got acceleration down here on the x-axis, force on the y-axis. For a mass of 5 kilograms, it's being accelerated um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 meters per second squared. So we're going to look at what happens to the force as the or force required as acceleration is increased. Our equation we're starting off with is F equals MA. Uh, so we plug into that 5 for the mass, 0 for the acceleration for the first one, and that gives us a value of 0. We can quickly plug in for the next one and see that the next force would be 5 newtons, the next one would be 10, the next one 15, 20, and then 25. And so we can see that this is in fact a linear relationship. Um, we can see that because we've kept the same scaling here. So remember, um, those of you who are graphing and things along those lines, you must keep the same scale in order to determine what type of relationship this is. If instead of jumping by 5 each time, I made it jump by 10 after this, then it would change the shape of the graph and not in a way that would tell us why it changed. Uh, mainly it would be us causing it rather than the data. All right, and we can put a line on there. One last thing, uh, which is I want to cover the relationship between mass and acceleration. So we've got force equals mass times acceleration. That's kind of linear. But if we wanted to look at mass versus acceleration, we want them on opposite sides of the equation symbol here. So if I divide both sides by acceleration, what I get is force over acceleration equals mass. And this is, in fact, an inverse relationship where y would be the mass and uh, x would be the um, acceleration value. And f is just kind of a constant in this case, determines kind of a little bit of it, more the scale of it as opposed to the shape. And we can actually switch this around. So mass could also be down here and acceleration could be over there. And so there's an inverse relationship between the two. And the reason why is if you hold this constant, the force, then if we increase mass, then acceleration has to go down um, by kind of the same factor in order to balance out and still keep the same force, and vice versa. So what that ends up looking like is this inverse graph right here. That's it. Three or more bullet points worth of notes, a so one to two sentence summary, and your follow-up questions on Google Forms.